Welcome to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be bleeding the IABS brake system on this 2001 BMW R1150 RS. This procedure is going to apply to all BMW motorcycles with an IABS servo assisted brake system. So step one is just going to be sucking the old brake fluid out of your rear reservoir. So open that up set that aside and then I like to use these remote control car um, little containers for sucking old fluid out they're really nice and flexible and they do the job really well so you're just gonna compress it and then just suck your old fluid out of your reservoir just like that then we'll top off your rear brake reservoir with brand new fresh fluid. And we are using Liquimoly Dot 4. But you can use any Dot 3 or Dot 4 brake fluid. So up here on the ABS pump, the first thing we're going to be doing is removing all three of these plugs. So these plugs are your fluid level sensor plugs, and this is your main plug. So it's really easy to undo. You just slide, use a flathead screwdriver or another suitable device. And you just kind of pry this plug over. Once you open it up, you can stick your finger in there. You kind of have to work at it a little bit, but that just pops right up like that. And then you can undo your two ones back here for your brake fluid level sensor. And we're just gonna unplug those and just kind of tuck those out of the way. So now we've exposed all of our bleeders right here. So there's gonna be six in total. So if you can see all six of these here, those are the next things we're gonna be doing. So three of these are for your rear brake ABS circuit, and the other three are for your front ABS circuit. So we will first do the rear brake ABS circuit. So the rear brake ABS circuit is three out of six of these bleed screws here. So for the first one is right here. So we're gonna pull off this cap off the bleed screw, set that aside. The second one is right here. We're gonna pull this cap off and set that aside. And the third one is right here. We're gonna pull that cap off and set it aside. The first screw here is the rear metering circuit. The second screw here is the rear integral circuit. And the third one here is the rear control circuit. So when we bleed this, it is absolutely necessary that we do it in this order. Number one here, number two here, and then number three. So we're gonna repeat one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, into a suitable container. Do not use a vacuum extraction device. You have to let it just, I'm using a, just a hose here that'll connect to one of these and it's just gonna drain down into a suitable container. So after we finished going one, two, three, one, two, three, we're gonna go return back to number one, bleed number one and when it's free and clear of all contaminated fluid and we start seeing fresh fluid come out and no air bubbles, that will ensure that the rear ABS circuit is complete. Okay, so now we are going to be bleeding on the rear metering cylinder on bleed screw number one here. So what we are going to do is pump up the rear brake pedal here with our hand, and then we're going to crack the bleed screw up here. The pedal's gonna drop down, then we'll tighten up the bleed screw here. So again, we'll pump up the pedal here, open up the bleed screw, close the bleed screw. Pump up the pedal here, open the bleed screw, close the bleed screw. And as we're doing this, the fluid level in the reservoir here is going to be dropping. So we're going to keep a close eye on that and fill it up with fresh fluid as we go. So again, pump up the pedal here, pump up the pedal here, open up the bleeder, close the bleeder, release the pedal. Pump up the pedal, open the bleeder, close the bleeder, release the pedal. And we'll repeat this about 10 times. So 
So now we're moving on to the bleed screw number two, the rear integral circuit. So what we're gonna be doing is we pump up the rear brake pedal, crack the bleeder, release the fluid, close the bleeder. Pump up the rear brake pedal, open the bleeder, close the bleeder. Pumping up the rear brake pedal, opening up the bleeder, closing the bleeder, and releasing the brake pedal. And we're gonna repeat this until we have clean fluid coming out of our hose here, free and clear of air bubbles and any sort of contamination. And then as we did on the first one, we're gonna keep an eye on the reservoir fluid level here. And now that we have no air bubbles and fresh fluid in our hose here, we'll move on to the third bleed screw. So now that the circuit number two here is done, we can pull our hose off and we'll reinstall our brake cap on number two and then move on to number three. So moving on to the rear control circuit on bleed screw number three, it's gonna be the same process as number one and two. We pump up the rear brake, release the bleed screw, the rear brake lever drops, we close the bleed screw. Pump it up, open, close, release. And this whole time, we're going to be keeping a very close eye on the fluid reservoir limit here. We do not want that to drop below the minimum. So now moving on, we're gonna go back to bleed screw number one, the rear metering circuit here. So we're gonna reinstall our cap on that bleed screw and then move on back to number one. So we're gonna do number one again, and we're gonna keep looking in the, ho in the hose for any sort of contamination, air bubbles, anything abnormal. And the, this whole time, we're gonna, again, make sure our fluid reservoir is always topped off. So we're gonna pump up the rear brake lever, open, close. Pump up the rear brake lever, open, close. Pump it up, open, close. Pump it up, open, close. So that looks perfect right there. And our brake lever still feels nice and firm. So we'll tighten all of these bleed screws up and reinstall our bleed cap on number one. So now after we finished bleeding all three of our bleed screws there on the rear ABS circuit, we can top up our reservoir here with fresh fluid and then reinstall our reservoir cap. Now moving on to the front, we're gonna undo the four Phillips screws holding the front reservoir cap on. So then we'll use our dirty fluid container, suck all the brake fluid out of the reservoir here, and then fill it with fresh new fluid. So now moving on to the front circuit, it's gonna be the same as the rear, but opposite sequence on the bleeders. So the front metering circuit, number one, is right here. The front integral circuit, is bleed screw number two right here. And then the front control circuit is bleed screw number three right here. So again, we're gonna bleed number one first, number two second, number three third, and then we're gonna to return to bleed screw number one to ensure all air bubbles and contaminants have been totally evacuated from the system. So in bleeding the front circuit, you're gonna to wanna to set your brake lever to the fourth setting for full brake lever travel. So starting with bleed screw number one, we'll put our seven mil wrench, the same seven mil that we used on the rear, on the bleeder, and then our suitable device that's not vacuum operated on the bleed screw. So let's start on the front metering circuit on bleed screw number one. So what you're going to do is very, very carefully squeeze your front brake lever in, loosen the screw here, 
wait till the brake lever goes all the way down to the handlebar and then tighten up the bleed screw and then release the brake lever. So again, we're gonna pump up the brake lever, crack the screw, allow the brake lever to go all the way down to the handlebar and then tighten up the bleed screw. So very cautiously, we're gonna squeeze our brake lever in, crack the bleeder, let the brake lever fall all the way to the handlebar. When it gets to the handlebar, we're gonna close our bleeder and release our brake lever. And we'll repeat this about 10 times or so until our fluid in here is clear and free of any contaminants. And we're gonna to wanna to keep a very close eye on our fluid level in here to make sure it does not drop below the minimum and suck air. So put tension on the lever, open up the bleeder, let the lever fall to the handlebar, close the bleeder. And now we'll move on to bleed screw number two. Pump the lever up, crack the bleed screw, let the lever fall all the way to the handlebar, tighten the bleed screw, release the lever. Pump the lever up, crack the bleeder, let the lever fall all the way to the handlebar, and then close the bleeder. Then we're gonna continue repeating that until, again, free of contamination, nice clean fluid in the hose, and then we'll move on to number three. So now we'll keep topping off our reservoir here to make sure it's fully topped off and doesn't fall below the minimum line. Very cautiously pump our lever up. Our master cylinder here can shoot brake fluid out and if you get that on your windshield, it'll ruin your windshield. So you have to be very cautious there. Crack the bleeder, let the lever fall all the way to the handlebar here. Close the bleeder, release the lever. Pump the lever up, crack the bleeder, let the lever fall all the way to the handlebar, close the bleeder. And we'll repeat this until we have nice clean fluid coming out of the hose. So now moving on to bleeder screw number three. Again, it's the same process that we've been doing. So now moving on, we're gonna go back to the bleed screw number one, the front metering circuit. So what we're gonna do is hook our bleeder back up, our seven mil wrench, pump the brake lever up, crack the bleeder screw here, let the lever fall all the way to the bar, and then close the bleed screw. And then we'll repeat that about four or five more times. So now I'll reinstall our bleeder cap and all this little excess brake fluid and stuff in here. We're just gonna soak that up with a rag, clean it up in here as best we can, and then reconnect all of our plugs. And then we're gonna move on to the wheel circuits. So now we will top up our reservoir with fresh fluid. And then put our reservoir cap back on. So now we're gonna reinstall the plug on our ABS pump. And it's just reverse of what we took it off. You're gonna have this out. It'll kind of drop in. Then you're gonna push this in. And then when you push this in, the plug will, plug will suck down. These two here, you can leave unattached and then we're gonna undo both of these right here. So to undo both of these, you can, if they're not thumb tight, which they should be, um, you can just use a wrench or even a pliers. So we'll undo both of these and kind of tuck these off to the side. And again, you do not need to plug these in quite yet. You just have to have this one in. So undo those. Make sure this gasket stays around there. We'll just kind of tuck those off to the side for now. So now for these two reservoirs, so there is a special tool that you thread into here and it's kind of a big 
um, funnel looking device that you would fill the funnel up with brake fluid, turn your key on, um, then you would activate your ABS with either your front brake or rear brake. And then while your ABS is um, operating, you crack your bleeder on your wheel and it's just gonna, the ABS pump is gonna force fluid out of the wheels, out of, flush it right through the whole system. And then the funnel that's threaded into here would drain fluid down rapidly. But a lot of people do not have this funnel tool and it, um, to be honest, it's totally unnecessary. So what I do is use your remote control car, um, brake fluid containers, and we're just gonna manually fill these two reservoirs right to the top, just like that. So this is your front circuit and this is your rear circuit. We're just gonna fill them right to the top. And these were actually quite empty. So once we filled both the front and rear reservoirs on the ABS pump, and again, we do not need the funnel tool, so that ABS pump still holds a significant amount of fluid. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our key on. You'll hear the ABS pump cycle right there. And then we're going to push on the rear brake pedal so our ABS pump will activate. You'll hear that right now. Then we're gonna put pressure on our brake pedal, not a ton of pressure, but you'll open up the bleeder here and then while holding pressure on our rear brake, you'll see the fluid evacuate from your caliper here. And the fluid's gonna be dirty and nasty, I'm sure. And then we'll only hold it open for maybe two or three seconds. And then we're gonna close it. And then we're gonna go back up to our ABS pump and top up the reservoir. So we do not wanna run our ABS reservoir dry. Otherwise, again, we'll have to restart this whole procedure but trust me, the ABS reservoir holds a lot of fluid and the funnel tool is totally unnecessary. So if you just follow along, I can promise that you won't have any issues. So we're gonna put pressure on our brake pedal, activate the ABS pump, open this, and you'll see dirty fluid come out of there, and then close, and then release. So then let's go back up to our ABS pump. So now you can see the ABS reservoir here. You can see the fluid level in there dropped. But if I don't know if you can see this on the camera, but you can see the fluid level in there and there's still plenty of fluid in there. Again, this ABS pump probably holds about eight ounces per circuit. So eight ounces in the front, eight ounces in the rear. So we're gonna top off the rear circuit again here. Just didn't take just barely any fluid. And then we're gonna do our wheel circuit again, and we're gonna repeat this procedure of filling up the ABS pump, holding pressure on the rear brake, cracking the caliper bleeder, closing the caliper bleeder, releasing the rear brake, and then topping this off. So now when I open up the bleeder, you'll see the fluid level in the ABS pump drop. So I'm gonna put pressure on the rear brake pedal, open the, caliper, you'll see it drop in there. And then I'm gonna close the caliper and then release the brake pedal. And I'll come back around here with clean fluid and top it off. So let's try that again. So the fluid's topped off here, put pressure on the rear brake open the caliper bleeder. I can watch in the reservoir, I can watch the level go down. Then I'm gonna close the brake caliper, release the brake lever. So now we're looking at the rear brake caliper again. We're gonna hold pressure on our rear brake pedal, activate the ABS pump, open up the bleeder here. You'll see fluid come out of here. It's nice and clear, free of air bubbles. Close the bleeder here, release the pedal. So you can see the fluid here, is nice and clear, no air bubbles, significantly cleaner than it was. So now we'll tighten that down, remove the bleeder here, and we'll move on to the front. So now that we're finished bleeding the rear wheel circuit, we're gonna top off the rear brake ABS pump here. And you can see, even after all that, you can look down in there, and it's still well over halfway full. So we'll top this off with fresh fluid, 
fill it right to the top. And then next we're going to be bleeding out our front circuit. So let's move over to the wheel. So now on the front circuit here, it's the same as the rear. I'm gonna hold pressure on the front brake lever, activate the ABS pump, crack the bleeder screw here. You're gonna see a big rush of dirty fluid come out and I'm only gonna hold the fluid or hold the bleeder open for a couple seconds and then I'm gonna close the bleeder all while holding constant pressure on the brake lever. And you don't need to hold a ton of pressure but just enough to activate the ABS pump. So I'm gonna hold pressure on the brake lever, open the bleeder here, and you'll see a nice rush of dirty fluid come out of here. Or not. So I was squeezing the brake lever almost with all my might and with one hand, and there was no fluid coming through here. So what that's telling me is these brake lines have failed internally, and there's a rubber there's rubber bits inside the brake lines here, and it's creating a blockage somewhere in the system. So if you look right here at this hose, when I turn the key on, I'm gonna tighten up the bleeder and we're just gonna pressurize the system. And right at these joints, they'll swell up like a balloon if these brake lines are failing. So we're gonna apply pressure. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on camera, but it's swelling up like an absolute balloon. And I could probably crack this, relieve some pressure, tighten it back up. I'm gonna give it some brakes. And you'll see that just swell right up like a balloon. I bet you the brake line is about ready to pop. You can see that holding pressure, just swelling up like a balloon. And then I release the brake and it collapses back down. So now this bike needs all brand new stainless steel brake lines and everything rebled. All right, welcome back. Now that we've gone ahead and replaced all the OEM factory BMW rubber lines with these Spiegler stainless steel braided lines throughout, we can continue where we left off on the front wheel circuits. So with our ABS wheel circuit reservoirs completely topped off, what we're gonna do is switch our key on. You'll hear the ABS unit do its little self-test there. Pop our bleeder cap off here. Put our wrench on there. And then our bleeder on that. So again, what we're gonna do is just squeeze the brake lever ever so slightly till you hear the ABS pump activate. And then we're going to crack our bleeder open. You'll see fluid come out of here. The fluid here is probably going to be cleaner just because we have all stainless steel braided brake lines that are totally full of air right now. So we're going to crack this open, bleed it out for probably two or three seconds, shut our bleeder, and then go back around to our reservoir and top it off. So you'll hear the ABS pump there. Open that up. See the brake fluid coming out there. And we'll shut this. We will now top off our front ABS wheel circuit there with fresh brake fluid. We can just fill that up right to the brim. And again, there is that funnel special tool that is completely unnecessary if you follow this technique. So now if you look at the ABS pump, here's the front wheel circuit right here on this reservoir. So as I open up the bleeder and squeeze the brake, you'll see the fluid level drop, but you cannot allow it to drop low enough to ingest air into the system. So as long as you hold, only hold the bleeder open for about two or three seconds, you're gonna to be totally okay. So squeeze the brake, you'll hear the ABS pump start working. Open the bleeder and you'll see the fluid level drop. And just like that. So we'll come back around here and then top our reservoir off with fresh fluid. And then let's move on to the front left caliper. So now moving on to the front left caliper, what we're gonna do is remove our bleeder cap. We'll install our wrench 
onto the bleeder, install our hose onto the bleeder, turn our key on, you'll hear the ABS pump do its thing, and then we're going to squeeze the brake lever and the ABS pump's going to make noise. We're going to open the bleeder, uh, brake fluid's going to come out of here. It's going to be probably a little dirty at first, maybe with some air bubbles since the, this line is brand new, so it's completely full of air right now. And then we're only going to hold it open for about two to three seconds, close it, top off our bleed or front wheel circuit reservoir. So there's the ABS pump, open this, see air bubbles and nice clean fluid come out of there, and then close, release the lever. So we'll top off our front wheel circuit reservoir on the ABS pump. Just fill this one right to the top. Squeeze our brake lever, open our bleeder, fluid comes out, close the bleeder, release the lever, top off the reservoir here. We can now turn our key off and then top off both our front and rear wheel ABS circuits on our ABS pump here, both these reservoirs and then reinstall our caps for those reservoirs. So these caps here just need to be thumb tight. You don't need to put a wrench on there and crank it down. The caps here are plastic and they'll probably crack and then they'll leak, which is not the best. And then plug in both our front and rear brake fluid level sensors. So now we will start an ABS bleed test. I know a lot of you probably do not have access to a GS911, but what this procedure is doing is just confirming that I've adequate, adequately bled the ABS pump and adequately bled the wheel circuits and everything is perfect, good to go. So let's start the front brake bleed test. And it'll give us some instructions here on the screen. So apply the brake with smooth action. Do not pump. Till the bar turns green, maintain this pressure in the green zone until notified. Approximately five seconds within green zone. So I have the brake front brake lever set to the maximum span at number four. So I'm gonna squeeze the brake. The ABS pump will not, won't work right now because I'm just applying brakes without help of the pump. So now it's asking me to release the brake. I release the brake. Hit okay. The brake circuit is adequately bled. Okay. Now I'm gonna start the rear brake bleed test. And this is the same procedure. So apply the brake with a smooth action. Do not pump until the bar turns green. Maintain this pressure in the green zone until notified. So I'm gonna push on the rear brake pedal. Oh, a little too hard there. It's pretty sensitive. So get it right there in the green zone. Hold. Release the brake. Okay. This brake circuit is adequately bled. So that just goes to show proving that the funnel tool is totally unnecessary if you use the right technique. We are now going to perform a sensor drift test. This procedure tests the drift of the ABS pressure sensor. This test is gonna take approximately one minute to complete. We will not actuate the brakes to, during this test. So we're gonna hit the start test. And this is just going to prove that my entire brake system is adequately bled and everything's working the way it should. So you can see it has the front main circuit, the front wheel circuit, the rear main circuit, and then the rear wheel circuit on here and it's holding pressure of about 20 bar across the board. 
So there's a significant amount of pressure being held in the ABS pump right now. And this is just checking for any sort of internal leakage or basically the health of the ABS pump along with the quality of my bleed. Pretty much held 20 bar across the board with zero degradation and pressure. The sensor drift test was passed. The drifts of all the pressure sensors are in acceptable limits. Thank you very much for watching my video. If this video helped you out in any way, please give me a thumbs up. Also, if you haven't already, please subscribe. And if you have any other viewer video suggestions, please mention that in the comments below. If you're feeling generous, you can donate to my PayPal or Patreon. Thank you very, very much. Have a safe ride.